I love this show right now. I love this show. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 22nd episode of the show Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 227th episode overall titled Trouble by the Slice. We begin this episode at a beach where Porto is showing off his new device that can transport any object elsewhere. Deep Talks is bored of his explanation, so she uses the device on a Piranatron, who somehow bends out of the way, letting the ray bounce back up a rock and move Porto instead. How did it not just transport that rock? Deep Talks isn't impressed, so she dials the thing up to full power, and Elgar insults how terrible her aim is. So, Deep Talks fires her eye lasers at him, but she gets a Piranatron instead, turning him into a donkey. Or an ass, I guess? Deep Talks then goes to fire at a Piranatron again, but he won't hold still, and he gets out of the way. The beam hits her, transporting her away. The others panic at her disappearance. Then on a sidewalk, Deep Talks is waking up, completely confused as to where she is or even who she is, screaming at some random guy walking down the road. Rough day. Carlos and Justin are walking through the park, and Carlos is venting how he really wants to ask this one girl out on a date, but Justin cuts him off about how he doesn't get the interest in girls all the time. Wait, was Carlos talking about Ashley? Remember when they flirted? Was that, was that a thing? Justin tells him to just ask, because he'll never know until he tries. Then Justin sees a soccer game, and Carlos asks if he wants to play, but Justin makes excuses. Then the ball comes firing at them, and Carlos catches it. Some kid comes up apologizing, and he invites him to come play. And Justin is scared too because he doesn't know how, to which Carlos says you'll never know until you try. The dialogue has actually gotten exponentially better in the second half. Divatox is walking around a shopping mall, coming to Mad Mike's Pizzeria. Inside, Bulk and Skull are acting as pizza delivery boys for the shop owner, leaving with pizzas. They then say hi to some girls as they leave who laugh at them. Why? Divatox walks in after they leave and she starts eating a pizza with a bunch of hot peppers on it. Then the owner comes over, calling her honey, asking if she has any money for the pizza. He tells her that since she's eating without paying after she's done eating, she'll work for him, giving her an apron. I feel like this is a really unrealistic trope on TV. On the ship, they can't find Divatox anywhere, and Elgar suggests they put Divatox on a milk carton to find her. Then they hear a noise and they think it's Divatox coming back, but it was just Elgar's stomach. They want food, so they decide they're going to get pizza. They row Shambo and Porto has to go get the pizza. At the soccer game, the kids are all playing soccer and Justin helps Carlos win the game, I guess. Carlos is like 10 years too old to be playing with these kids. Also, Bulk and Skull are dropping pizzas left and right and they're very lost out in the field. Then they just start eating the pizzas and then they just toss them behind them, saying that they're delivered. At the shop, we see Divatox is cooking and some other employee is disgusted by her eating the pizzas. Then the shop owner is on the phone with some lady telling her that there's no delivery time guarantee and he hangs up the phone to reveal... Porto in a terrible disguise. They got five pizzas cooked to a crisp and he picks up his pizzas leaving. Then another customer comes up complaining that there was a bite missing out of his pizza. Then Divatox comes out to start bussing some tables and Porto spots her, trying to talk to her, but she has no idea who he is, even pointing out that he has an aquarium on his head. I mean, if she can notice it, why didn't the shop owner? She leaves and Porto's a bit panicked. Then Carlos and Justin walk in with their kid friends and Porto freaks out even more, trying to hide. They all sit down and Justin explains that he goes to high school and then one of the kids calls him a nerd for being smart. But then this other kid sticks up for him saying he's cool because he helped win the game. They then get up leaving, running over to an arcade game together. I like this because now Justin has a friend that's actually his own age for once. Then Divatox comes walking out and while Carlos is ordering food, Divatox is walking around in the background, setting up the table and whatnot, just missing Carlos. This is a great bit, though the most unrealistic part is that there's a pitcher of orange soda, water, lemonade, one mushroom, and one pepperoni pizza that comes to $15 even. In what world? In the ship, Porto tells Rygog and Elgar about how Divatox is in a pizza parlor, and Elgar is excited that now they get free pizza. I like your thinking, Elgar. Porto mentions how there were rangers there too, and Rygog sees this on the periscope. Rygog tells him to make a monster right away, and Porto turns the mascot on the pizza box into a monster. Mad Mike. The owner is on the phone and there's no pizzas being delivered yet. Then Carlos is at the counter talking about how a bite has been taken out of his pizza. The owner freaks out going into the back, screaming at Divatox for being an absolutely terrible employee. But then Divatox complains threateningly back about how she can't work with all he does is scream. And she's super intimidating, making him shrink back in fear. Divatox is a power top. Also, this is when we finally find out that this dude's name is Mike. Girl, I don't know if this is a chain. On Earth, Mad Mike appears, finding guys loading up a truck, so he tosses exploding pieces at them. The alarms go off in the power chamber, and then Justin and Carlos's communicators go off, rushing off. Also, Elgar is there, grabbing Divatox into the back room. Porto's also there, and the employee we saw earlier comes in, screaming and running away. Then Divatox tries to fire her eye lasers at Elgar, but he uses a pizza pan to reflect it back at her, knocking her down and regaining her memory. On the ship, Elgar explains to Divatox that they ate pizza before they saved her. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love Elgar. Carlos and Justin meet with the others in the power chamber and Detox introduces a new weapon to the Rangers, the turbine laser. It's just a cannon. That's it. Shift them to turbo. The Rangers show up near Mad Mike and TJ says they're there to toss his salad. TJ out here eating ass. My man. Then Mad Mike tosses exploding pizzas at them before sending flying ones that just explode on impact, sending the Rangers flying. Then Lightning Cruiser and Storm Blaster show up and Mad Mike puts pizzas on their wheels, somehow taking control of them. Also, Justin refers to Storm Blaster as Mountain Blaster, which I mean basically the same thing. Then they get blown up again, knocking them down. The cars chase the Rangers into a warehouse. Then Divatox asks for a colossal cooker. Then the Rangers are hit away by the cars, flying into a giant microwave. Oh my god, this episode. They realize that they're in a giant pizza and Mad Mike is there screaming at them. TJ tries to fire him with his auto blaster, but it's a no-go. Mad Mike adds a bunch of ingredients, including more cheese, and he hits the start button, creating a giant pizza. Then the blue centurion just wanders in for no reason, opening the door and finding the rangers cooked into a giant pizza. My god. Mad Mike is there and the blue centurion fires at him. Then blue centurion gets blown back by Mad Mike before he's getting attacked by lightning cruiser and storm blaster outside. Mad Mike has brought the pizza outside and he has a giant fork and knife and he goes to cut Cassie, who tells him that she's probably not completely cooked yet. This episode is like surreal. Then Blue Centurion just stops the cars with a stoplight because, well, yeah, they're cars. They stop and the evil pizzas drop off, restoring the two cars. Then Blue Centurion turns his sights towards the monster, firing at him, hitting him back. Then he gets hit with another exploding pizza before he tosses over the pizza, using his blaster to get the rangers free. Then the rangers all head forward with the Blue Centurion hitting Mad Mike a few times before they call out their turbine laser, firing at Mad Mike and blowing him up. Then they all say random exclamations of anger. Nuts, rats, drats, curses, fooey, fiddlesticks. What? Why? There's nothing to be mad at. That made no sense. Then Divatox fires the torpedoes, making Mad Mike giant. The Blue Centurion says that they need a giant-sized pizza cutter, so Robo Racer online. He converts into battle mode. They battle, and here comes more exploding pizzas. Okay, guys, we get it. Then the Turbo Megazord comes flying out of nowhere, knocking Mad Mike down. Then Robo Racer just uses his blaster on Mad Mike before the Turbo Megazord does its spin-out attack, killing the monster. Hasta la pizza, baby. On the ship, Divatox has the transporter armed again, and Elgar walks in with more pizzas, and Divatox decides he's a test subject. Rogok says, no, wait, don't shoot, and he grabs the pizzas out of Elgar's hands first, and then Divatox hits Elgar, making him disappear. They realize it works, and Elgar is outside in the water, swimming around, and he's being chased by a shark. The end. I love this episode, but there's actually a surprisingly amount unresolved. I mean, we don't know whatever happened with Bulk and Skull, though we can kind of assume they got fired. Also, TJ, Cassie, and Ashley are barely in this episode at all, which means they're probably being heavily focused coming up in some point since episodes were shot in blocks of three at this time. It's a fun, weird episode that makes almost no sense, but again, it's a lot of fun. What else could you really want from a Power Rangers episode? I mean, it had Porto dressed up in a moo moo while Divatox was cooking pizzas. It's just a really fun one overall, and it's pretty legendary in the fandom as a flagship episode of how weird things got in Turbo. I don't think that's a bad thing, though. So next time, a new ranger appears. But until then, may the power protect you.